Um, it's no secret to that you also uh, have an affinity for uh, comic books, is mm -hmm. that true? Mm -hmm. When did that start? Um, about the same time. Comic books, you know, again, because we moved so much. Um, I never really had a neighborhood. There was never like, it was never like the park is over there and my buddy's house is over there and there's the schoolyard because it was always changing. So um, comic books which were constant in a spinning rack at whatever store we happened to live nearby in whatever town we happened to be living in, uh, like television because the shows were on as well, they became my neighborhood. They became the place where I went to to find the things I knew and the touchstones that would keep me safe and give me some sense of uh, of my place in the world and that kind of thing. So they both transported me and, and um, kind of grounded me at the same time. Mm. So big question, Marvel or DC? DC. Oh. DC, I'm a, come on, I'm 1959. That's the same year the Legion of Superheroes was yeah, uh, okay. created, Superman, Batman. I mean, I read Marvel stuff when I got mm. a little older, but um, right. no one liked Marvel comics in those days, except for the older kids, because they were always continued. DC Comics, the story was over at right. the end of the issue. That was it. You didn't have to buy the next one. You could read them in whatever sequence you wanted to, but Marvel right. got into all that kind of meta continuity stuff that has now yeah. completely taken over comic books and is all they're really about anymore. Huh. I also, it, it's also uh, like it's, uh, Superman is in Metropolis, but Spider Man is in New York. Mm -hmm. There's that difference too. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, did you like the fact that DC was just so fantastical? Did you like, what did you like about DC? Well, I liked the, well, I liked Superman a lot. Superman mm -hmm. and Batman were my go-to heroes, and really Superman because it was that, that um, you know, protect the innocent, work on behalf of the people who don't have a voice, all of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that I certainly wasn't learning at home. Right. So, you know, right. it was being taught to me somewhere, as the Marvel stuff was always a bit more grown up. I got into it when I was a teenager, but even, you know, in the 60s, it was high school kids and university kids who were really into Marvel comics right, and yeah. really got into that kind of reinvention. And when I look back historically now, and of course I did read Spider-Man and the Avengers and all kinds of stuff, but um, it was sophisticated stuff they were doing, particularly compared to what DC was doing, which was sort of like Superman becoming a giant baby or Lois getting a super <laughs> brain or whatever. All these really great visuals that didn't really pay off in a story, whereas Marvel was kind of the other way around. They weren't that visually imaginative. They were much mm. more realistic, but the stories were better. The characters were better. The thing I loved about Batman is there was just one big revenge fantasy. You know? Yes. Well, I yes, when your that. parents are killed yeah. in front of your eyes when you're yeah. eight years old or whatever. That's, yeah. that's, that's probably one of the best origin stories ever. You know, yeah. that he, he became a, a multi-billionaire and a superhero and not a drug addict and a serial killer. is yeah. quite amazing because he could have gone either way. <laughs> it could have, absolutely. He <laughs> yeah. became a multi-millionaire. And also, too, there's a, you know, on those days when I hated my parents, I just, every now and again, I'd fantasize about maybe my parents were in the alley. Yes, <laughs> maybe, you know, exactly. Like, <laughs> if my parents had been killed, I'd probably be a billionaire now, too. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Totally.